join the team. Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Kinfire Delve. This is another one from Incredible Dream. I will say before we get kicked off here, this is not a paid-for advertisement, I like to call them. So you won't see the little tag pop up. However, this game was provided to the channel for review, so I did pick this up actually at Gen Con from the company there, and they wanted me to take a look at their Kinfire Delve. Now, this is coming on the heels of Kinfire Chronicles. They do have a board game called Kinfire Chronicles, so if you do like this style of gameplay and you think you like what you see here, you might want to check out Kinfire Chronicles. I've never played Kinfire Chronicles. I can't speak for it, but I will say if it's done uh, relatively similarly or anything like what we see here, which it, it is very similar from that nature, it's from the same universe, just sort of a little bit of a different style of gameplay, then it probably is pretty good. So you may want to check that out as well. But we're going to look at Kinfire Delve. Now, there are three different uh, versions of the game that are out. They are all identical. So don't worry about, hey, do I get different mechanics? Do I get different components? Are these expansions of one another? No. All three of these are literally identical in gameplay in the components that you get. The only difference is you're going to get some different characters in each one of them. And if you do want all the different characters and the abilities those characters have, you can kind of mix and match the things that are within these three sets, which is nice if you want to do that. And they each have a different theme. So, for instance, the one we're going to take a look at today is Colas Lab. It's like this thematic, you're, you're, you're diving down through the, the well, and you're in this sort of like lab-type environment, and that's the kind of stuff you're going to run into here in this one. Here you've got Scorn Stockade, so kind of a different type of theme, more of like kind of a darker kind of theme, and you've got the stockade and the horse and and all of that. And then here you got like a grotto theme. So this is going to be more sort of, um, we'll say, I don't want to say fairies, but we'll say kind of fairies and magical type things in what you would find in a grotto. So out of the three, probably the lab and the grotto are probably my personal favorites, but that might be different for you based on, you know, thematically what you like. But I, I think these two here are probably more of my favorites. So let's kind of get into what we get um, in the box, I will say right off the bat, nice, super nice, high quality cardboard box. Like, super thick. Like, this thing is solid. And inside, there is some artwork here, and you can use this obviously as a rolling tray because you will be rolling dice while you play. It's got a nice little small rule book here. You can flip through that uh, pretty quickly. I would say within about 10 minutes, you kind of understand how to play and you're ready to go. So it's very simple from that perspective. The cards are nice, high quality, and not only that, they have a gold kind of treatment on them as well, which is really cool. Now, not all of them, but your character cards definitely do. So let's look at the different type of cards that we have. You're going to have uh, two different characters within each set. Um, this character here is kind of like an archer, so sort of like a ranger type character, which I really like and thought was cool. You're going to get your character card, and that card is going to have kind of a main ability for your character. So when you're playing, you'll have that card in front of you, and you'll have the main ability for, Vol for Valora here, the Guardian from Afar. So for each basically ranged card you play as an action or a boost, and we'll talk about what those things mean, you may add one progress to any challenge not currently being attempted. That's actually really powerful to be able to add progress to all the other challenges that you're not actually attempting. And we'll talk about that. Every character has this special thing called a lantern, and the lantern is like your, think of it as like your, your only a few times per game like superpower that you're capable of lighting, and then when you use it, you flip it back over. So that's how the lantern works. And then you're going to have a bunch of character cards. We'll get down here to the next uh, character. And all of those cards are going to have that gold like treatment on them. It's going to look really, really nice. This is pretty much going to be your deck that you play during the game. You're going to shuffle these up. You're going to draw seven cards. That's going to be your hand. And you're going to use those cards to either play actions or the other a thing that you'll do when it's not your turn is you'll boost other people's actions. It's very easy. Each of these cards just have a number at the top. That's kind of how much you're doing towards the progress of whatever you're taking on. You can think about it as like this is the damage that you're doing to whatever you're taking on. 
And then at the bottom here, there'll be a number and there'll actually be a little square here with a color. And that color has to correspond to the type of challenge that you're taking on. The card does as well. So these cards will come in red, they'll come in blue, they'll come in green, and they'll come in white. And white is like a general, it can apply to all the colors. If it is black, it is none of the colors. And the same thing will work with the boosts that are on the bottom of these cards. So when it's your turn, you're either gonna play a card and try to like take that value towards what you're trying to achieve. You'll also roll dice and then you can be boosted with your uh, friendly opponent here, uh, which is, this is a cooperative game. It is just a one to two player game. You can do four player games if you have multiple sets, but it's really designed to be a one two player game. While we're talking about that, there's two different ways you can play the game in standard mode or easy mode. Standard mode, you will start off uh, with taking three cards off the top of your well deck. And we'll talk about how that works here in a second. In a shorter game, you'll take 13 of those off. I recommend for a two-player game, take 13 off into a short game. I think it's a better experience because then both, as two players, you, you, you take a little bit longer anyway as two players, thinking about how you want to boost each other or what you really want to do or talking things out. So to speed the game on and be able to play multiple games, go ahead and play the short version of the game. It doesn't change anything else. So I think that's a much better experience. With solo games, I think you just burn the top three and you play the standard the standard length of game. And I think that's a better experience when you've got a little bit more time, you're just soloing the game, having fun uh, with yourself. Okay, that's how those character cards are going to work. And then we're gonna have um, a couple different other types of cards. So I'll put our two characters out here. Right, and you'll be able to see these character cards on the side-by-side. -side. Bear will do that for us, so you can kind of see a little bit on uh, what these cards look like, all right? Um, and they're, they're, they're both totally different. The characters operate in, in a very different, uh, very different way, which, is, which makes for a lot of fun on those games. That's why I recommend kind of going with that shorter game for two players, because then you play a game. Okay, let's swap characters and play another game. You're also going to have these cards called exhaustion cards, and they're going to look like this right here. And what's going to happen is when you start the game, you're going to draw those seven cards, and that's going to be your hand. You don't ever really refresh cards from your hand uh, unless you choose to do so, and when you do, you then will take an exhaustion card. So there's a balance in this game where you want to make those seven cards in your hand last as long as you possibly can, whether it's you playing the card when it's your turn or it's helping your neighbor and boosting their attacks so they can take out different uh, challenges because you're working together to get through this well deck all the way to the bottom, okay? And every time you do that, when you say, okay, at the beginning of my turn, I'm gonna refresh my hand. Let's say you have two or three cards left, doesn't really matter. You just draw back up, you cycle those in, you draw back up your seven cards, and now you have to draw randomly one of these exhaustion cards. And you can't have multiple of these out at one time in the game. There's also things in the game that will help you get them out of play, and you absolutely want to do that when you have the ability, because these cards really do work against you. They're just things like this one here is each time you discard one or more cards from your hand, discard one extra card. Okay, that's going to make things harder. Here's another one. If you've reached the bottom of the well, just go ahead and suffer two damage. Then shuffle this card back into the exhaustion deck. So that one's going to pull itself right back out as soon as you get to the bottom. We'll read one more. At the end of each turn, either suffer one damage or remove one progress from Collis. So it's just really not um, not good, right? Like you you don't want these things to come out and you want to control very strategically when they do. And when they do, you want to try to deal with them uh, the best that you can. But it's just, it's one of those things that scales the difficulty of this game the further you dive down into the well or the problem that you're trying to uh, address based on whatever theme the set is in. Okay, here's the well deck, and at the very bottom here, I've got the, um, no, I don't, where are they at? Okay, here we have the uh, final four challenges, and then there's three monster cards. So when you play the game, you're going to shuffle up 
these boss cards there's three of them and then you're going to randomly choose one you're going to put it this side up right in the middle of the table and you don't know what you're going to be fighting at the end of the game and then these other two are going to go back to the box they're all three different they have a different uh, number to beat they have a little bit of a different ability on the card it's sort of just having like multiple different bosses in a game like a boss fighter and you don't know which one you're going to go up against at the end of the game then you're going to have your well deck you're going to set that to the side and then you're going to have these four cards here which are like the gauntlet they're the four final challenges um, before you can fight and defeat the boss so once you draw the last card of the well deck then you, if anything's left, you'll just go ahead and get it out, and then you'll surround your boss with the final gauntlet challenge. Um, you will defeat these things, and then you will fight and defeat the boss. So it's not an easy game by any means. Um, that's another thing that I'll say about this game. Uh, it is very challenging to be able to win. And again, on a game like this, I like that, because... If it would have been too straightforward and too easy, I just don't think it would have been one that would people would have hung on to and left in their collection for long periods of time or played over and over again. This is a great travel, solo, little card combat game. It is sort of like a boss battler, but it also feels like this little combat adventure that you're going on to be able to get to the boss. So there's a great design and mix with that as well. The cards are super high quality. Uh, these cards are all like spotted, you know, much higher quality than, than your standard card. Just everything has just got like the treatment in the game. And the cost is fairly low cost as well to be able to get in and pick up one of these. So really, really impressed from that perspective. How this gameplay is going to work is you're going to shuffle this, this well deck. And again, you're either going to take off three cards right off the top into the discard or 13, depending on you want the short game or the long game. You're then going to draw four cards, and you're going to put those cards all the way around this unknown secret boss. And the cards are going to be two different types of things. They're either going to be events, or they're going to be what I would refer to as like combat type battles. If it's an event, and that is the card that when it is your turn, you choose to do, then you just read the card, like here's an event, Stolen Essence, and let's say that I was playing this character and I went first, and I wanted to just go ahead and do this event, I would just pick up the card and I would read it. It says, discard this card and a challenge. If it is a husk, discard your hand and draw a new hand without gaining a exhaustion. So it may be very strategic for the players to say, okay, we're going to leave this event out for as long as we possibly can because you choose every time which of these which of these cards you take on. And that's the puzzle or the thing that I really like about this game is you want to attack these cards in combinations that work for you to, to most go quickly through this deck or give you really long-term benefits like this one. I would never do this unless I literally was ready to exhaust and I was down to just a few cards, maybe two cards. And it's like, okay, I need to exhaust my hand next turn. Well, maybe this player goes against something and then the next turn I choose to do this, this event. Now I get to exhaust or I get to refresh my hand for free. I don't have to exhaust, but I have to, I have to play it right because if I want to discard my hand without having to get the exhaustion, the other thing that I discard has to be a card that's called Husk. So it has to be a card like this. This card has Husk right up here on the top of it. Just the type of like enemy or combat that it is. So it has to be that. If it's not that, I can discard any other thing on the board that I want. And maybe there's another really, really hard challenge that's just working against me. Because these cards will have passive abilities as well. The longer they're out, they may be working against you. And you may say, you know what? I really, really wanted that free hand refresh and we could wait and we could leave this husk out as well so we could use those in combo to get my free refresh however there's another uh event that's come out there's another well let's not say event let's say a combat there's another combat that's come out here that has a passive ability that is really really working against us we need to just go with discarding this and discarding that and forget about the free refresh so those are the decisions you're going to be making over the course of gameplay 
that add a lot of strategy to you being able to win or lose. And that's why this game is difficult to win because it isn't as easy as just, okay, there's four cards out. Uh, I'll go with this one. Okay, I, I play uh, a card that does three damage and it also has this little ability. Hey, can you boost me for another uh, one damage? So now we got four of the five. And then the last piece that you're going to do is you're going to roll these four dice. And if you get uh, the right color of the card, that counts as a success. Or on this light or dark die, if you get a, a light, it's counted as a, as a success. So that's the last sort of random chance piece that you have to balance. You'll roll these dice and you'll see how many successes you get. And then you add up all those things. The number on your card, the number from the boosts, and the number from the dice. And if it meets or exceeds the number on the card, well, then you get its benefit. If you don't, then the card has uh, a fail condition. Sometimes it's nothing. Uh, most of the times it's something that is going to do damage to you as a, as a player set, uh, which is not good. You only have 10 health. You share that health as players. And you'll use this little 10-sided die to be able to track that. So you just put that out at 10. And as you take damage, or you choose to take damage, sometimes you will choose to take damage for various different benefits, then you just kind of work that die down. And if it ever hits zero, you obviously have died and you lose the game. So that, that is an important thing. It's a shared health between the players. Okay, And that is Kinfire Dive. It really is that easy. You would have seen from the side-by-side -side, sort of the cards and the various different abilities that um, you can get, as well as the boosts at the bottom. There are a few different symbols in the game. I'm not going to go over them all. The, these symbols are, correspond to your character's ability, generally. And the cards will say, hey, if you play another card with this symbol, it does something better for you and more beneficial. The thing that you're going to have to really work out is how many of these cards do you just start pitching out to be able to beat this you're really going to have to say well if it's if, if the number is seven i may pitch a card that's two and can you boost me at least one or two so let's try to get up to four at least and then i'm going to take my chances and my luck and i'm going to roll these dice and try to get the last three that we need that's what's great about this game is you have to balance all that because if you just start burning through these cards, these exhaustion cards are just going to start coming out. And before you know it, there'll be so much in this game working against you. Even if you're able to get to the bottom of this deck, you still got to go through the gauntlet before you even combat the boss. And it just, it's never going to happen. You're going to lose. So that's what I love about the game is it's so simple in nature but it is very strategic and it can be very difficult and it brings you back to the table because you want to get to the bottom of that well and be able to defeat that boss. There'll be a number of times you'll get to the bottom of the well, but you won't make it through the gauntlet or you'll bit the well, you'll get the gauntlet and you'll die fighting the final, the final boss. It is always a close game. You will never win this game just like dominating it unless... You get very, very lucky in the draw of these cards because a lot of these cards can combo together as well if you do events or different combats in specific orders for what's out in front of you. You can actually burn through this deck a lot quicker. I actually played a game where I got a combo that allowed me to burn off 21 cards of this deck in turn two. And that was a huge benefit towards... The potential win for that game because i was able just to take a stack of those cards off and just be like all right let's go like we're really moving through this well so uh there's there's ways to do it but it does depend on the cards that come out so be mindful of that always and there's always four cards right it isn't overwhelming there's only four cards the center one does nothing you will have some little chits um i didn't i didn't get them out but they're they're there are some little chits that do come with the game. This tracks progress, and your progress will stay turn to turn. So let's say you went to a card and you failed, and you did three of the five of this progress. The three would stay there, and you could come at it again later in the later in the game at another turn. So the progress does does stay there, and you will start this card off with progress in here as well. And if progress is removed from that center one, 
and it gets to zero before you're able to fight and defeat the monster, you'll lose the game. And that's really it. This is Kenfire Delve Team. I do recommend this one. This is this is one that I would recommend for that travel or, you know, at night solo kind of experience that you want to do. Again, it is a it is a very fun two player game as well. I wanna I wanna almost say this game is really better as a one and two player game. You, if you have multiple sets, you can play this as a four player game. I just I, I don't know that it really it still works. It's still fine. It's still a fun game. But I I just think that one and two player experience is really what it was designed to be. Uh, and and the three and the floor the four is more of like a scaling of that experience. I do think that the one and two player game is really fun, is really good. I would very much recommend Kinfire Delve. So if you want to check it out, just pick up one of them. Just pick up the one that jumps out to you the best with the theme uh, and go from there. But I promise you, you won't be sorry. This is one that you're going to hang on to and you're going to have fun with for years. With that team, keep rolling them crits. This has been the McGuire Review and we'll see you next time.